Right, so we finally arrived at the fourth uh, sorting algorithm, and this one's called Quick Sort, and it's quite nice. Um, I'm going to explain it in uh, my own certain way, I guess. Um, but so the uh, words that I might use might be a little bit different to what you've heard in the classroom. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to start swearing or anything. Um, so this is uh, a list of six numbers that we're going to be starting with, and different um, different teachers are going to teach us in different ways. Um, when I first started teaching quicksort, I always picked um, the. I was always taught to pick the center number as the center, the middle the no middle number as the pivot. Uh, and if there was an even number like this, it would always be in the middle and then go one to the left. And that would always be your pivot. And if you are consistent in your method, then that is perfectly fine as choosing your pivot. However, um, instead of possibly making a mistake with that, um, I've now adopted using always the first number of any sublist. Okay, so in this list, this original list, um, I would use 5 as my first pivot. It's the first number in the list. Okay, so as a pivot, what that means is that I'm going to compare all of the numbers with 5. And any number that is less than 5 will go to the left of it, and any number that is larger than 5 will go to the right. However, you must make sure that you don't do any uh, number juggling with this, which means accidentally putting numbers in order as you go. Okay? Think of it that you are training a very stupid computer to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and say, well, the numbers 4, 3, 2 are less than 5, and they must maintain that original order, 4, 3, 2, that they were in the previous list. Okay? If you put these in order 2, 3, 4, you've gone wrong. Then 5. Okay. Now, I would call that a live pivot because it's the one I'm using. And it is now, once used, it is dead. So that's what I mean by the strange uh, wording here. Okay, so I use live and dead pivots, and I circle live pivots and square dead ones. Then the larger numbers, the numbers larger than 5, go to the right, so that's 7 and 6, and they have to maintain their order also. Now what you find here is that you have two sublists. You have 4, 3 and 2, and 7 and 6. The 5 is now fixed into position and cannot be moved. So we now circle and use the pivot, uh, the first number in each list. So 4 and 7. And we're going to work with both of these at the same time. Don't do one and then go through the motions and then you choose the other. Okay, That's not how it works. So for the number 4, the numbers 3 and 2 are both less than 4, so they must move to the left. Okay, the 4, having been used, is now a dead pivot. We still have the number 5 there. Okay, that's fixed into position. And now we have 6 has to go to the left of 7. 7 is now dead also. Now we still have two sublists. However, um, in this sublist, I can choose 3 to be my next pivot. However, for this number here, this is a sublist of just one number. There is nothing to compare it to, and so this is not chosen as a pivot. Okay? It just get, it is now stuck between two dead pivots, and there's nothing to compare it with. It cannot be moved. It is done. It is fixed in place. Okay? Don't box it. Don't underline it. Whatever. Okay? It's there. It's done. So the only thing that we've got to deal with is over here. The 2 needs to go to the left of the 3. The 3 is now a dead pivot. The 4 is dead. The 5 is dead. 
Then we have the 6. Then we have the 7, which is also dead. Okay? And this has shown to the examiner exactly which numbers you're using as your pivot, which ones are now dead pivots, which one is now fixed in place. Okay? And this is quick sort. It's nice. It is quick. Okay? And I'm going to show you another example in the next video. Okay? Well, I'm going to work a little bit quicker.